Would you like to learn how to quilt using your machine? Here's a checklist of some tips for beginners working on machine quilting. The list is divided into two categories, before and during. This video will focus on during quilting, how you can improve your straight line quilting and stitching in the ditch. We'll be using these two quilts to showcase the steps on the checklist. For your convenience, a copy of this checklist can be found below along with the times that each entry appears in the video. Now you're ready to quilt. Remember the saying, slow and steady win the race. I can set this machine to a slower speed to help keep me in check because I always have to remind myself to slow down. Even at a slower speed, you're still moving faster than if you had to quilt this by hand. Start in the center. It doesn't have to be dead center, but working from one side to the other side and back again will help prevent puckers. First I'll do this section, and then this section, and then this section. Once I have these three areas secure, I'll turn my quilt. Starting in the center again, I'll do this section, and then this section, and then this section. And after the center is anchored, I'll quilt around the border. Later I can go back into each block and add more quilting if I decide to. Here's another example of quilting from the center out. If you plan to quilt on these blue lines, you would start on the side center, marked 1. Then you would quilt line 2. Flip the quilt and complete line 3 and 4. Turn the quilt again and start on the side center at number 1. Then stitch line 2. Flip the quilt and sew down line three and then four. Pull up your bobbin thread where you're going to start. Put the pressure foot down, needle in, lift up your pressure foot and use your scissors to pull up that thread. Then hold on to your thread so they don't make a mess on the back and lower your pressure foot. Decide on how you'll knot your threads Today I'm just going to go backwards and forward to notch my threads. Always clip those threads before moving on. If you'd like to find out about other knotting techniques, check out our video on machine knots. Always keep your hands around the area that you're quilting. They act as sort of an embroidery hoop folks like to wear quilting gloves or rubber gloves to make it easier to hold the fabric, but this isn't necessary. Remove any safety pins in the way. As you stitch through that opening made with your hands, when you get to where your thumbs are, stop, keep the needle down, and reposition your hands. Stitch. Stop, reposition your hands. You want to continue in this manner as you quilt. Position yourself directly in front of the needle. Make sure this needle is stitching in the valley, not on this hill. Fabric's a little bit higher over here because of pressing. If you pressed your seams open, then you'll want to stitch right through the center seam. Here's a closer look at that hill and valley. You can see the needle right here is coming down right alongside of that hill. Here's a close up of that stitching. When you come to an intersection, you'll want to slow down. It's like driving a car, going over a bump. So take it slow. Go right through that intersection and then you can start up again, going a little bit faster. Sometimes you might want to avoid this intersection altogether, especially if it's where your seam ends. I could still quilt through this area if I want to mark it, or I can just stop here, secure my threads with a knot. Instead of clipping threads every time you stop, which takes time, just lift up your pressure foot Move to the next block while pulling out your threads. 
Make sure you use a knotting technique to secure your threads and then stitch on. And continue stitching to the next intersection. I'll stop, add a knot, move my quilt, start up again with a knot, and continue quilting. After the row's been quilted, I can come back in and clip these threads. If you have a needle down function, use it. Whenever you stop, make sure your needle's down in the fabric. Lift up the pressure foot to pivot and to change direction. Readjust your hands and start sewing. Stop, needle down, lift up the pressure foot, pivot, and continue sewing. If you don't have a needle down button, you can manually place your needle down, pivot, and then continue on. Moving your quilt through this small opening can be quite the challenge. Some folks like to roll up their quilt and use clips to keep everything in place and put it through the machine like this. Others feel that this causes pulling. They prefer to keep everything sort of fluffed up and then use their hands to flatten the area being quilted. Try both methods and see which one works best for you. If I'm stitching these outside borders, I want this area to be as open as possible. Always try to position the majority of the bulk on the left side. Having all this bulk on the right will make it more difficult to quilt. No matter how hard you try to redistribute the bulk, at some point you'll end up in the center. When this happens, slow down and keep your hands in position. One way to avoid marking your quilt is to use tape. Let's say you decide to quilt through this sashing. You can just place a piece of tape right here and follow the guideline. When I get to the next intersection, I can just reuse that tape. The last area I want to quilt is this outside border. I decided I wanted a line about two inches over. I could use tape for this line, but I think it's easier to use one of these attachments with my walking foot. To add this to your walking foot, just slide this through, adjust the width, and then screw it in. It's easy. I've set this up two inches over from my needle I'll be using this inner border as a guide for my quilting. Pulled up my bobbin threads and I'm ready to quilt. Let me get these threads out of the way. I'll be watching this line as I stitch. When you get to the corner, you will have to mark where you turn, but you can also use tape for this. So I'll just continue traveling around my quilt in this manner. And this is the way I avoid marking. When your project has been quilted, trim the excess batting and backing, and then add binding. Hope this checklist helps. If you're still hesitant about machine quilting on your piece top, try purchasing a panel for practice. We also have some small projects that you can try before tackling a larger quilt. To find out about these videos and more free tutorials, check out the links below. And if you haven't viewed part one of this series, please do. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends.